Welcome back, guys. Today we're going to be doing the Dark Tower. We got four points into all the towers, five points into Reign of Fire and Reinforcements. This is it, the final battle, at least for the main campaign. It all leads up to this. I was uh, not quite sure how to build my defenses. I think I like the way this turned out. I did it in one take. The only thing I would really change is on that roundabout on the center towards the right hand side, I would go ahead and replace that with a sharpshooter tower instead of getting an elven tower, but that'll come later. We're, we're jumping way ahead. Keep this setup. We want one barracks on that bottom side. Artillery on the roundabout. Of course, that is going to become a Tesla coil. It's a little bit rough getting started because artillery isn't all that great here. We don't have enough DPS or support, but um, keep the faith. We will be getting our archer tower is upgraded. It's going to help us a lot, and then we will get that Tesla coil pretty quickly. And that's going to do some absolutely massive damage. Especially next to the graveyard, where all the guys are going to come out and take the Tesla coil damage and get slowed down and just great stuff. I do love how the main boss just like taunts you the entire time. But the Dark Tower, isn't that like the most generic? D&D sounding name ever. I think so. You're going to want to keep Geralt next to your barracks. Just kind of keep him in the back, let him chill, let the skeletal knights and things group up, and the artillery can chunk them down. At this point, most of our archers are, have been upgraded. We got multiple level twos and threes. And then we also have a level three mage tower. And drop a rain of fire there. Call the wave in a little bit early. Cruising on to wave five. I went ahead and just kind of build out most of the map with towers, even though they aren't fully upgraded. Usually, I can stick with a couple relatively upgraded towers, but I went ahead and built some archer towers towards the entrance there on the enemy side, because that is where eventually we'll be upgrading them. And we have a ton of money this map. It is the final level after all. I'm curious, it's only 15 waves as opposed to the previous one which was 19 waves. So it's actually less waves but it kind of makes up for it because there is a big boss fight and some of the waves are pretty long. Notice those demon, what are they called, pentagrams in the center. They summon your guy or more guys, more demons. The only one you have to really worry about is the one on the final way of the innermost one, I guess. One closest to your choke point. Later on, they will come out of that spot, and that's scary because they're very close to our exit. You can see we already have a Tesla coil. By wave 6, we have gotten, I believe, all the upgrades for it. So, massive damage. Almost soloing the Skeletal Knights by itself. Really, really helpful. Got the Dark Riders coming out on wave 7. But again, we have enough Archer Towers to where they really aren't an issue. I do drop a Rain of Fire though to kill off those Hellhounds. Those things are kind of annoying. They have a lot more health than your standard wolf. And here we're going to be getting the Elemental Mage. It's a good spot for it. Weakens a lot of guys, sets them up for more damage. I went ahead and moved Geralt over to the top right hand side to deal with the elemental guys the necromancer guys he's effectively stalling out two of them by himself and preventing them from summoning more skeletons so that's quite good elven archer now central roundabout area and once they enter that tesla claw range you can see it's just doing so much work deleting these guys before they can really go anywhere lots of fun Plop your reinforcements, though, on top of the Necromancers whenever you get the chance. Spider Matriarchs are going to suffer the same fate as all those little Necromancer guys. Just can't compete with the power of the Tesla Coil. 
In fact, you probably could have gone with two Tesla coils. They're just that good. I only went with one here, but two might not have been a bad idea. Okay, so you see those little symbols around your towers. The boss will periodically raise his hands and summon little magical barriers around your tower. You have to quickly click, or if you're on mobile, tap to break those spells. Otherwise, it will lock your tower down for several seconds. And it's kind of a throwback to where this game was made for the mobile platform. You can really tell this was a mobile game. And that would be way, way easier to tap on a mobile phone. I find, because I'm playing on a 32-inch monitor, my mouse kind of gets lost on the map. So it's easy to forget where your mouse is. And sometimes you are clicking on the wrong thing. And if you spam click on these towers, it's easy to accidentally click on them once you have released the spell and sell them, which is not good. I do that one time on this map. So you can see most of the Elven Archer or Archer Towers have been upgraded to Elven Archers. Not really putting too many points into any specific upgrade yet, but focus on getting those level fours around this time once you have all of your towers upgraded. My priority order would be Roots on that central Elven Archer Tower, then Poison Arrows for most of the Elven Archers. If you don't have time to click on all of the towers, simply prioritize the most important one. If a barracks gets locked down, it doesn't really matter. The guys will still block. And I do fully upgrade this Sharpshooter Tower, which ironically turned out to be a lot more important than it probably should have been but you will see that in a little bit. The Tesla Coil is probably the most important tower, so make sure that never gets stunned. You can see I just straight up ignored that barracks. It's like, I don't really care. It actually is kind of to our advantage because sometimes he will go for the barracks, even though the barracks don't do any damage. So there is that innermost pentagram that is being summoned. You really want to be careful because those guys will run deep into your lines. And I do end up building another barrack tower in that last little build spot. There we go. Just to deal with some of these demons that are making a run for it. We have a ton of cash. Don't be afraid to spend your money. You will have so much of it. Your favorite upgrade is certainly fine here. I think the poison arrows, of course, I said, are very consistent. But I do experiment a little bit with the Sharpshooter Tower, and I wish I had built one more of these. Geralt can more or less stay in the same place, except for that one wave where he wants to take care of the Necromancers. He can pretty much be back by these Paladins. Not only does he give them the buff, but it's just a good place for him to stand right in the edge of the Tesla Coil. Most of these guys are just getting deleted by the Tesla Coil Tower before they really become an issue. And when they finally do get to the end, they're getting teleported back and they're getting chiseled down by the Mage Tower and the Archer Tower. So, good stuff. Okay, finishing up wave 14, about to get into the final wave. That Mage Tower on the back, the purple one, Death Ray Tower, is fully upgraded. And then I do build a golem here with the elemental tower. I don't really touch the paladin upgrades until the very, very end. In retrospect, it might have been better to get at least the attack upgrade. This uh, mini game is. A novelty at first, and then it just kind of gets annoying, especially on the PC to just be spam clicking all the time. But it's only for one level, so I will forgive it. If this was every level, that would be terrible. Sometimes, like, your towers are going to get disabled, and it doesn't really matter that much. But there are a couple critical moments where you really don't want your Tesla Quill being disabled. 
he seems to go for the testicle coil a lot. Okay, so this is the boss battle. Now my big mistake here was I didn't realize this guy actually has two forms. So what I should have done is just immediately dropped the Reign of Fire and chunked him down as much as possible. I held on to the Reign of Fire for way, way longer than I should have. I could have gotten at least an extra Reign of Fire in, in the amount of time that I held on to it. There was no point for me holding on to this Reign of Fire here. I should have plopped reinforcements onto him and then dropped the Reign of Fire immediately. But I was just preoccupied thinking that he would die to the towers and didn't do it. But that would have saved me a ton of hassle at the very end of the map. He doesn't quite one-shot the elemental, which is quite good. Could have probably used Geralt to stall out a little bit too. The first stage is almost done now. You can see poison ticking. Now I dropped the Reign of Fire. That was the biggest mistake. Should have just let him die. But I thought the game was over. See, he turns into a dragon. He does straight up one-shot your Geralt and your barracks. And you can see here's why I wish I had the sharpshooter. Because the second, the mid lane probably could have reached him from here. We are desperately trying to use our barracks, stalling him out as much as possible. Between our two barrack towers at the end, Geralt and the reinforcements, we do buy ourselves enough time for the mage tower and that sharpshooter tower to kill him. But it is pretty tight. A couple more seconds and he may have been out of range. So with one last reinforcement, and those knights that respawn, we're going to drop a Reign of Fire and finish off the level. But you can see if I just held on to that Reign of Fire or used it earlier, it would have been so much better. So, I made the mistake, so you don't have to. Credits are rolling. We did it! Victory! Your Majesty Vesnon is no more. Party time. General, I hereby order you Defender of Lanera. And we get the credits. There is a little option to skip. It's asking us not to, but I'm sorry. We're skipping. Finally. Mine. I think they would have picked that up or something, but nope. Okay, so three stars, 20 lives completed. Now we unlock seven additional elite levels, two of which are standalone. The rest are actually mini campaigns. One of them ha even has four levels in it, which is crazy. There are actually more elite levels in this game than there are standard levels. 14 to be precise as opposed to the 12 standard levels in the campaign. So I will definitely be going back and doing these, and of course doing the heroic and iron challenges as well. So stay tuned for that. You can see, I look at the encyclopedia, there is a whole another enemy page that we have yet to encounter. So there is still a ton of game left. I hope you guys enjoy the future content. Thank you for watching. You have a good one.